Hello everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. Um, so, um, I did skip a little bit of time between the last episode and this one to do a few things. Um, first of all, um, it was pointed out in the last episode that I accidentally added way too many missile fire controls on the Sheehan. Um, so that were, I probably had the five times selected uh, when I added them in and ended up with six of them. So stripped it out, dropped it down to a single one. Um, and I also removed a layer of armor. And that's actually brought it under 616 kilotons. Um, and picked up the speed a little bit as well, which is nice. So what I might do is um, I'm just thinking if I add another yeah so that gives me two repairs of the maximum uh, and I've got 50 tons left as well so a little bit of extra fuel mm, that's cutting it close mm. Um, yeah, that 50 can stay. Um, yeah, so uh, so the first thing I did was I stripped out the extra missile fire controls and the layer of armor, and that's brought it under... Actually... No, I'm still top. Okay. And that's brought it under um, the 16 kilotons, which means it can start a construction right away, because uh, we do have a spare 16 kiloton shipyard. Um, the other thing that I've done is I've gone ahead and optimized the arrow missile, so this is the previous one. Um, so 1.8 warhead of nine, uh, fuel, one fuel capacity, 1.5 agility, and 1.53 engine. Uh, and what I've gone ahead in is I've changed it to a 2.6 engine. Um, same warhead, and I've shuffled the fuel and agility and rebalanced it out a little bit. So what we end up with is, uh, if we show a comparison, so it's a faster missile, so it's gone from 16300 to 2700. Um, endurance has gone, uh, the range is about the same, 139 to 135. Uh, same damage, same size, uh, but the accuracy for the missile is a bit better. So uh, 84 and 42 compared to 99 and 49. So uh, a little bit accurate. Uh, th this accuracy is what I was specifically aiming for for this particular missile. So 100% accuracy against slower targets um, and just and around half accuracy for uh, things like fighters. So um, this equates to, off the top of my head, maybe about 80% accuracy against ships doing 7k, which is uh, precursors, invaders, and... Well, not swarm because they're not, but um, yeah, th this will give us a reasonable accuracy against um, most ships. And any NPRs that we run, run into are probably going to be doing around this speed at the moment anyway. So um, that's really good accuracy. And we're still doing 9 damage and we still have good range. And we're much faster, which makes it much more difficult for them to actually be shot down in the first place. So much nicer missile. Um, the AMM is perfectly acceptable. Um, the range mm, might be nicer to get it up, get it faster. So let's go see if we can actually optimize that on camera. Um, so let's do prototype. So prototype uh, pl uh, drives are really handy in terms of. Um, doing the missiles yourself. Now, obviously, there are calculators out there that you can use, um, which is perfectly fine. But, um, yeah, sometimes you just need something a little bit different. So, we strip this out, get that to point twenty-five. Uh, that gets us up to 90. So, hang on. We'll take the settings off first, so we know what we're working with at the moment. Okay, and speed. Okay, move that, move that, minimize that. 
Okay. So, we take the prototype. Um, when you're doing prototypes, uh, so a prototype drive is basically the power rating that you're going to be working with, which is usually going to be maximum, um, combined with the smallest possible engine. And then just add engines until you're happy with the speed. Then you go and build um, an engine of that size, and that will usually give you pretty good range. So, let's get this down to 0.25 at the moment. And how much do we have? We got room for five. Um, we'll get this up to two ninety five. There we go. Um, how does that compare? Only two point two minimal, but the speed is substantial. Is increased by by about four thousand kilometers a second. So. Mm. Nah, it's fine. Um, there's not as much there that we can work with. So, okay. So now, because we have our warship, so quick run through. Yep. Uh, we'll go ahead and change it now. Sheen, we want. Fantasy creatures. Sure, why not? Okay. So, with the Sheehan, we're going to need missiles. So, uh, what's our ordnance production? We've got 2,600 points. So that's fine. So, we're going to need a fair amount of these. Now, one thing to, to, that you need to uh, keep track of is that there is a particular bug where the amount of resources required to build a missile um, does blow out once you actually go to build it. So do just quickly verify that the resource requirement is correct. So we got 2.25 titanium, point boronide, point iridium, 304 gallocyte, 1700 fuel. Perfect. And for our AMM1... Uh, 0.25 galasite, yes, fuel is fine, excellent. So, that's all correct. Um, if you do happen to run into that bug, um, then all you need to do is just redesign the missile and then you're fine. Um, what you'll notice is that I think it just blows out the galasite cost by about 100 times or something ridiculous like that. So, yeah. Um, now, because we don't need the arrow and we don't have any in production and we don't want it to be cluttering up, if you click this button up here, it will take you to all your technologies, so all your designs that you have um, in general. And if you go to missiles, here it is, arrow, and you just obsolete it. And that will strip it out so, you're so you don't have to worry about it. And if we switch it back, there we go, and it's gone. Now, so what we're going to do is We've got storage for about 160 missiles on each ship. So we'll make 1,600 arrow E's. And for the AMM ones, we will make we've got 300 per ship. We'll make 3,000. <clears> there we go. And we'll split it. <clears throat> um, 80-20, I think. Yeah, good enough. <clears throat> and um, actually, better make it. Mm. I wanted to finish, and uh, I wanted to build at roughly the same rate, so. Uh, but we have different quantities as well, so. Mm. Let's try. This is going to take much further. So if we drop this one to 70 and raise this one to 30. Okay, so want about halfway. So 25 and 75 should be fine. Remember March? Good enough. Okay. <clears throat> Next, uh, we have our shipyards. We're halfway through expanding it, so we just let it expand. Uh, but we need to tool it for the Sheehan. 
Uh, now you'll notice that because we changed the class type from destroyer to destroyer escort, we now have the destroyer Melbourne, the destroyer escort River, and the DDG. That should be missile destroyer. Yeah, missile destroyer. DDG missile destroyer. Okay, and we will tool that. Once again, because it didn't have a class tooled at all, we can tool it without canceling uh, this project. So, if remember, the next thing that we need to do is we need a sensor boat, right? So, what we'll do is, now I believe our, do we have a jump ship? We should have a jump ship. I believe our freighter is our jump ship. That's for the exploration ship. Too small for that one. No, we do not have a jump ship. Okay, so what we'll do is we will make our... We will make our uh, jump ship our sensor boat as well. So 12-month deployment. And... We need the active sensors, which we don't have just yet, so we have to wait for those to finish. In the meantime, because we're going to need several of these, do we have enough engines? We have two, and I think the Sheehan uses two. Yes, it uses two. All right, we'll start, uh, we'll start building one. Unicorn. Actually, first ship should always be named after the class. And we'll build it into the shipyard task group because why does it always go to the other one? Oh well, there we go. And that is underway due to complete in about, in about a year. All right, so next we need to pound out this... Um, search sensor and get that going. Uh, I've also switched to the uh, 0.25 size launcher and we've also finished the geological survey of UX25 as well so didn't find anything. Uh, because I have no, nowhere else to send the team I will disband it. Uh, this sends the people back to the pool immediately. Um, it doesn't matter where you're from so that's fine. And we've got a spare lab so I'll put that into the um, into the search sensor because we still have another one. Get that out ASAP. Yeah. All right. So we got we got our tug, so we can get that redone as well. Refit. There's the county that was the tug. Yep. That's it. Uh, we need 20 commercial engines. We only have seven. Um, well, let's get more of them out there. So we'll retool the tug um, a bit later. The current, the one we have at the moment is doing the job just fine, so it's fine. <clears throat> I think what I might do is actually shift all research into our search sensors. There. Oh, that's much nicer. All right, we got uh, two more of our explorers. And this one's actually done doing what it needs to do. So doing the grab now. Um, okay. It gives me two. All right, so now where are we sending this one? Uh, 
Uh, we'll send out the other one at Rocky. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Rock uh, Townsville is past Rockhampton from Brisbane. So, excellent. Um, Grimsby 2 will go to Rocky. And then out the other jump point. Now, what we also need is, because we know how big our shifts are going to be, we can actually go ahead and just get the jump engine sorted out right now. So, we need a jump engine capable of jumping 16, 16 kilotons. So, this is our jump engine, and we want... No, it's fine. It's not worth the extra one. Um... There we go. And we'll get that one out once we have our sensors as well. Actually, how much is it? 3,200. I might take eight of those and peel them off. There we go. Um, we've got two more refits done and we have our new naval yard. We'll get that going. Okay, first sensor is done. What I might do is shuffle these uh, shuffle some labs around so we get them done at around the same time October December so uh, take one add one take one add one October November yeah Nope, oh, nope, this is much as you can control. Oh well, close enough. Okay. <clears throat> New freighter. Ah, yeah. uh, looks like Mars has all the oxygen it needs as well. So, now that we have the oxygen on Mars, we will go ahead and start producing greenhouse gas and 0.25 for balance. We don't have a planetary governor. I think he died a while back. Let's put let's put a new one in. So we still have Earth, we still have Luna, we need Mars. And who's on Luna? We need to move Laura Van Thiel to to Mars. But she's got that fantastic terraforming bonus. Laura, move to Mars. Now we need one at Luna, though. So, for this one, we want Wealth Creation. Uh, so what has it got? Wealth. Wealth and Population Growth. That's nice. Wealth and Factory. Wealth and Population Growth will be perfect. There. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be source. Got plenty of workers. Good. All right. Now, um, another point did get raised. We, um, at the moment, our fleet is providing 656 uh, protection level to Sol just by being in the system. So what we, but our fleet will eventually have to leave. So uh, once we find something an, uh, annoying, so what we're going to need is we're going to need something to protect it. So uh, to protect Earth and stop uh, the population from complaining. So what we will do is we will create a missile base. Now we've got two options. Okay, the first one is we can put an orbital hab, which will start us at a quarter million tons, but oh well. Um, that, mm, 
Yes, we will need an orbital hab. We will need, so an orbital hab, no engines, but we will add a few layers of armor, and we can put our missile control for both. Um, four of these, four of these. And let's say a hundred of these and a hundred of these. Now we needed five of them for there we go. Some of these. And let's go for just in case anything gets through. We'll get 20 of these. We need some fire controls, so we'll get five of these. We need this sensor. So, basically, in other words, basically making a floating fortress, right? So, but, but the biggest problem is that no matter what, because it's an orbital habitat, it's a military habitat, which means that at the end of the day, we're going to have to pay maintenance, right? Look at their failure rate, right? That's going to fail all the time. So a better option is to make it a PDC. That will strip out some components. So obviously, um, the, hab, the hab, the orbital hab is gone. So a tonnage is back to normal. And you'll notice that the armor is actually four layers thicker then we have a set to. So a PDC will get a bonus four layers of armor by default. So it starts with five, and then you raise it from there. Um, and the other advantage is that there's no maintenance at all. So you don't even have to pay any resources to maintain it. You build it, and it's done. The problem with PDCs is that once you build it, it's there forever. It, it can never be moved again. You can't, you can't, there isn't even a disassembly, right? You can refit it and to, un to upgrade it, but once you build it, it's there forever. The only way to get rid of it is to use SM mode to get rid of it entirely. So, um, Gauss cannons are projectiles, so they work through atmosphere, so we'll keep those. Um, we've got a fire control uh, with a required tracking speed. Um, we've got, we don't need fuel at all. Uh, another little trick, if you make it a tanker, um, then um, you can... It'll, it won't complain about having zero fuel. Um, I think removing the fuel tanks apparently also does it as, does it as well, but it's a little bit flaky on that point. Um, so we've got 100 launchers of each. We've got multiple fire controls. We've got uh, gas cannons with multiple fire controls. We've got ECCMs. We need more ECCMs uh, because... Um, oh, and there's no ECM, of course. You can't have any of those. So we'll need four of them for our long-range ones. Uh, we don't need thermal sensors of any kind because the planet should have its own thermal sensors. We'll add another layer of armor to get it up to around 20. Um, PDCs are also limited in that they can't uh, field shields of any kind. Um, however, they're a, great way, they're a great place to store... Um, ships in hangars. They're fantastic hangar, hangar um, storage. So you can load up a whole bunch, of, uh, a whole buttload of fighters, or even just store an entire small fleet into it. Like our 16 kiloton ships, right? We can put two of them in one of these, and then neither this nor those two ships have to pay maintenance. Fantastic. Or we can field um, a lot of fighters. So we'll, give, we'll use this and we'll um, use it for fighters. So we need crew berths for those fighters as well. So keep excess Q um, basically tells it to not automatically adjust the crew quarters to, um, to the crew of the ship itself. It's very important for anything with hangar decks because anything that's docked to a hangar deck um, will continue to rack up deployment time unless... The ship that it's docked to has flight crew berths equal to the crew of the thing that's docking to it. So we'll need a couple hundred of the crew berths. Um, we don't need fuel storage. We don't need... Uh, we need some damage control. 
100 damage control is fine. There we go. Uh, it can't store any maintenance MSP. It takes MS, it draws MSP directly from the planet if it needs to use it at all. Uh, we've got the bridge. Fire control. So all we need to do now is wait for the other laser to rock up. Uh, and then we're good. So AMMs, we've got about 600. Of, mm, make it an even thousand. And the rest will fill with arrows. There we go. 950 arrows and 1,000 AMMs. That is a pretty nice uh, missile base. Now, what's interesting is that the PPV, which is basically what... Um, uh, this is the value that's added to the protection rating, right? So it's this is the planetary protection value. Um, you don't actually have to have any ordnance loaded at all. You don't even have to have magazines because the PPV of a missile launcher is dependent upon the fact that it is a missile launcher and it is there. So we could have no magazine or ordnance loaded on this entire thing and it will still provide the PPP value to the system. And now obviously we do actually want it to be a functional military base because you know if something comes into the system we're going to need a way we're going to you know need to use this to fight it off. But um, that's there. Uh, the advantage is that PDCs, even without an orbital habitat, can be built using industry. Um, so even though it costs 17,000 build points, and it'll probably be a bit more once we get that big sensor on, uh, even though it costs 17,000 build points, um, it will be, um, we'll still be able to build it. It'll take a while, but we'll still be able to build it. Um, and we'll set the name type to... Uh, there was a uh, one here with uh, fortresses or defensive defensive works. There we go. That should be fun. Yeah. So we'll build that once we get the uh, the next level of sensor. <clears throat> um, and by the time that's built, our fleet uh, will probably be ready to leave, and we might even be able to find something to shoot at, which is great. Okay. Keep working on that. Okay, we've got a new system, Cairns. Interestingly enough, another system heading to the north. All these, all these northern cities are all clustered together. That's that's really interesting. Would be nice if if Cairns was coming off of Townsville instead of Rockhampton. Um, that would have think been extremely suitable, but um, oh well. And then, of course, Brisbane between Rocky and Seoul. That that would that would have been fantastic. I don't know. Maybe we might, maybe maybe we might re rename these a little bit sometimes so they better suit um, the actual structure of Australian cities and how they organise. But eh, it's fine. Um, now we do have a few wrecks here. Uh, we got three sixty-seven kiloton wrecks and a thousand kiloton wreck. So Grinsby two, I think that there is a very good chance that you might get blown up in the system, but we'll see how we go. So we'll do one day turns. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Our spray just being refitted. Yep. Thought so. All right, Grimsby two. Turn around and see if you can make it back out of there. Probably won't though. But all right, let's see what we have as contacts. Okay, so we got a bug in the sky. Cairns Alien, so it's a new one. It's not one that we are, that our intel is is, in, is familiar with. Yes. Um, yeah, it looks like we got some. That looks like a picture of Ifrit from Final Fantasy IX. No, not nine, eight. Almost a little bit. Anyway, um, so we're going to tag this neutral, but we'll go ahead and assign these guys and see if they can find anything. So it's minus 20 at the moment. They may potentially be neutral. Maybe. Ooh, they're fast. 
15,000 our fleet. Yeah, not that one. I don't think our fleet is going to be useful against these guys. Yeah, our beam ships are going to be useless. We're going to have to use our missile boats for this one. We're still going to bring a beam ship, though, because, you know, why not? Um, and if they get close, then we're going to be able to kick their ass. But it does look like they are not necessarily hostile. What's a planet like on cans? Oxygen, nitrogen? Yep. That's going to be an NPR. That'll be an NPR. They're probably on cans A5. Alright. We are definitely going to need a combat fleet now. So, we need to get that sensor up as soon as possible. Yep, they are definitely non-hostile. Let's change that. <clears throat> there might be something else as well. Because we might not be able to uh, actually communicate with them. Oh well. <clears throat> Okay, we can't communicate with them. All right. Could be an NPR. Um, could be the there might not be an NPR, but there might be something else. But I'm not really sure what there might be. But uh, that's okay. So we have a sensor. So first and foremost, we will go ahead and take our Waramunga class. Sorry, our Stuart class missile base, and we'll bolt that sensor on, which is here. There we go. And with that, now we have 20 layers of 210 columns of armor. Um, now, PDCs rely entirely on their armor to survive, which is why shock damage is so damn powerful against them. So what we'll do is, um, we, actually we have plenty of AMMs and we have plenty of Ghost Cannons, so I think we'll be fine on that front. So well, what we'll do is 120,000 tons, we'll go ahead and start construction. So to build a PDC, you have now you have two choices. First one is just build it straight up. That will build it and drop it on the planet, same as the orbital habitat. Um, but, what you, but with PDCs, you also get the option of prefabricating it. So prefabricating allows you to take the manufacturing output of one planet and use it to build a PDC on a different one. And the way you do it, you prefab it. It gives you those components, and then you can assemble it. And once you have all the, enough components on it, it'll become visible. You can assemble it using purely construction and an absolutely tiny fraction of it as well. Um, so that means that you can take your uh, construction brigades and use it to build a PDC uh, somewhere else and just basically put it together once it's actually there. Now, since it's going to be entirely based on Earth, we're going to go ahead and, and build it. Sorry, build it straight up. So what do we cost? We got 6,000 uranium, got plenty of it. 1,000 neutronium, got plenty of that. 65 corbamide, nothing. Uh, tritanium, that's going to be before the armor. So 3,000 compared to 81. How are we doing on tritanium? We're out here, but I believe we have a source here. And that's working its way down. So that's fine. Got plenty of tritanium. Uh, Macassium, Vendorite, and Iridium. Got plenty of those as well. So we will go ahead and add one. Okay. Now, what do we need? still need? We need that jump drive. So we'll wait for that to finish. Hmm. 
We might need to run. We might need to rush out um, new engines as well. There we go. So we'll add some of those. We'll add ten to that. Add five to that. Don't need so many working on there. So we'll drop that to ten. Raise this back up to ten. Raise this up to ten. And what are those? I want the 15, the 0.5 multiplier for fuel. But after that, start working on. Um, actually, we get efficiency. Yeah, no, start working on the next engine. <clears throat> I want to get that fusion react fusion engine up. Okay, but we can start designing our. Um, Waramonga Jump Destroyer. So, actually, it's not really a Jump Destroyer. It's more of a Jump Tender. No, Jump Scout. Because it's got all the sensors on it. So, we need our 1,000 ton missile sensor, our 1,000 ton ship sensor, <clears throat> and our Where is it? <clears throat> there it is. Our military jump drive. Okay. Now, this military jump drive has the capacity to jump all of our military ships. However, the jump capability of a ship is determined by the lowest value of its jump drive and its tonnage. Now, because... Now, this ship is capable of jumping itself because its own tonnage is less than its uh, maximum jump drive. However, because the ships that are going to be jumping with it, and it's actually going to be acting as a tender for ships that are much bigger than this, then this ship has to be bigger than the other ones. So, what do we got? We got the Sheehan, which is 15945. 15945 and you do need to make sure that this is the number you're looking at because this one is not exact right so we got the river which is 15966 15966 and we have the melbourne we want it to be capable of jumping the melbourne even though it's not really going to be doing it it's 14690 so what we need is we need to make sure that the Waramunga is at least 15967 um, exact size. How are we going to do that? Well, simplest matter. Actually, where's the... Do we have a freighter? I don't think we have a freighter. No, a tanker, I mean. No, we do not. We do now. So, tanker collier. So, it's a military vessel, right? So, that means that, like it or leave it, um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to run maintenance, right? Because you can fit a size one sensor onto, um, onto a civilian ship, but if it's larger than a size one, then it's classified as a military. So, it's a military ship. No way around it. So, but but what we can do is we can give it uh, an extra few magazines, and we can give it some fuel. There we go, 6 million liters. That'll give it a little bit of extra fuel for the fleet that we can draw off if we need to. And we can, well, we need to get the AFR down to something reasonable, but we'll get some maintenance storage. And do we have our engines? No, we don't have our engines yet. We need engines.
Perfect. That's beautiful. So obviously it's too slow to be really useful, but it's a tanker and the jump transport, it doesn't need to be uh, keeping up with the rest of the fleet. So it's just going to sit in the back and basically suck its thumb until um, it's ready. However, we need those extra 100 tons because we need to get it... Yeah, we need to get this number above this number. So it's 15,895. We need to get it to 15,966. So easily and easily achievable. All we need to do is just give it more fuel. And call five nine six six. And I don't like it sitting exactly sixteen thousand. No, no, it's fine because the jump size is sixteen two hundred. So that is perfectly acceptable. And we get a little warning saying it has no missile fire controls or launch. Oh, it has no fire controls. Wait, why does it have launchers? That's supposed to be magazines. Okay, so it's not going to be a collier. The fleet is going to have to rely on its own, um, on its own um, magazines. Um, but actually, can we fit a magazine? No, not even at all. Um, where is it? There it is. But that, that just means we can fit more fuel in there. 16,150. Good enough. It's definitely bigger than all of our warships, and it's within the jump limit, uh, which means that it's good. Cool. So we have our Warramonger Jump Scout. What kind of range has it got? 120 billion kilometers? Pfft, no problem. Now, the alternative option, actually, is that instead of making it a military... Instead of giving it a military engine... We give it a commercial one. Now, that's going to slow it down a lot, but that means it's not going to be chugging all of its own fuel, and it'll act as, it'll be a better tanker overall. But it's a bit slow, so if we put two engines, and... How much fuel do we have to strip out? We're going to strip out almost 2 million litres. How much fuel do these things go through? So, um, 1.2, 1, 1, hmm. We might have to make a dedicated proper tanker, just a slow chug tanker. Um... We need a faster response time, so we'll go for the single military engine. Give it some proper speed, and and you know, at the end of the day, it's only meant to be just um, a simple refuel. And we can actually strip out some of these large ones and go for the a single very ultra large. So, an ultra-large, a very large, and a few extra-larges. There. So, we really do not want this thing to be shot at ever at all. But, it'll do. So, it's got the sensor. It's got the sensor. Actually, now that I think about it, this thing will get shot at. Because we need the sensor to get within range of the enemy. Um, this is risky. Having one of these is risky. Okay, strip out the large. And we'll give it some armor. Four layers of armor. That'll have to do. Do we have any shields? I don't think we have any shields. Um, I think for the next generation, we'll start using shields as well because that'll make things a little bit neater. But this thing has no defenses um, except for its armor. It's going to completely and entirely rely on the fleet to protect it. So it is absolutely essential um, that this ship is capable of um, 
basically being in system. So, hmm. alternatively, no, we need 16 kilotons. Alternatively, what we can do is not make this to tanker at all. But it can be a sensor boat. And just run the same speed as the other ones. Oh, well, we still need fuel. And I can still supply the, the maintenance space. Um, we don't need as many of these, I think. Ah, this is awkward. Yeah, that'll have to do. So we still have a reasonable speed. The fleet isn't going to fall behind because of it. I mean, the Sheen is going to slow things down more than the, more than the Warmonger will. But yeah, we have ourselves a jump scout. It'll do. Um, eventually, we'll we'll convert it into a stealth jump scout um, by giving it um, low thermal engines and um, cloaking drives and whatnot. But for now. Uh, this will have to do. So 16,200 is our target. Um, what I might do... It's not going to be suitable from any other ship because of those sensors. They're going to throw off the um, tooling rate. So <clears throat> we're just going to have to wait for that new shipyard. But in the meantime, we have ourselves a... Grimsby 2 that's not going anywhere. So what we'll do is we'll shunt it. Um, actually, no. We'll let it stay where it is. We'll send it to the Cairns jump point and we'll tell it to just stand there. Are the enemy, are they hostile to us? They are. Okay, no. Getting it to sit there is a bad idea. So we'll leave it where it is. We'll leave it on Earth. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thankfully, we do have a combat fleet that is perfectly capable of defending Sol. And also, very importantly, we have um, enough detection in Sol that we should be able to spot anything that comes through. So, where would it be coming through to? It'll be coming through the rocky jump point, which is there. Um, the only one that could run through be Adelaide, which is this one. So they can get to Newcastle and Perth, but they can't get to Sydney and Canberra, which is there and there, without us be being able to detect them. So we will see them coming, um, and we'll be able to do something about it before they can get to anywhere. So once again, we've gone up to 49 minutes, so I'll take a break there, and in I'll probably run through and get that new shipyard and start construction on the jump ship keep working on that and when we continue on uh, we should be ready to go to war um, if anything of particular interest happens obviously uh, we'll pick it up from there but otherwise thank you for your time and see you next time